What is going on guys, Noah Brewer here, back again with another video. Finally, it's been so long, over the last 30 days, I have not uploaded any videos, and this video is about to be a banger. We're gonna be hanging out for a little bit here, and we're gonna be going over exactly how you can use the same strategy that I use to take stores from zero to 100K a month or more. So obviously, I didn't just stop uploading on YouTube and disappear off the face of the earth. I've actually been working on many different things, um, mostly e-commerce related, um, in terms of bettering my strategies and further positioning myself to have a better future essentially uh, because drop shipping as you know it in the way that I've been doing it over the past four to five years is just not it and what I mean when I say that is basically just putting up a store whipping up a shit product page testing it, scaling it, making 100K, whatever, and then saying goodbye and doing it over again. I mean, yes, it works, and yes, I do love that strategy very much, and it's actually how I made pretty much 90% of my money. What they don't tell you about that strategy is after you make your money and you wanna go bigger, it's very difficult to either position yourself as a brand to potentially make an exit or build an actual long-term sustainable business, and it's also a pain in the ass when you start off like a shit drop shipping store and you wanna make the transition into being a brand anyways. So. so over the last couple months, I've been working on new strategies, one of them which is actually going to allow us to introduce the pioneer method to TikTok ads. Yes, as you know, up until this point, I've only been doing copycat method with TikTok, basically finding products that are already doing good on the platform and bringing them there. And if you've been following me for a while, then you know that I love pioneer method. And that's actually how I made the majority of my money is following the pioneer method with Facebook ads. And if you want to know more about the pioneer, of course, we're going to cover it a little bit in this video. Feel free to go back to my channel and uh, check it out. But you know what, let me start sharing my screen and I'll kind of show you what we'll be going over today. So this is really gonna be a full training going over product research and you can see that we're gonna go in depth on a couple different subjects. Um, store creation, ad creation, uh, how to create your test campaigns, how to analyze your test campaigns, and I'm also gonna be giving you enough scaling strategies to actually get you to that 3K a day point, um, which is why this training is called zero to 100K a month, because I'm not just gonna be showing you how to find a winning product like many of my previous trainings, I'm also gonna be showing you how to actually scale them and get them to that 100K a month point. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's talk about product research. This, I know this is your guys' favorite Favorite topic um, so let's get right into it we're gonna cover criteria uh, copycat method and I'm also gonna show you how to how I do the pioneer method so not much to go over here um, and if you've seen my previous trainings then you already know most of this stuff but let's talk about what we are looking for when we're doing product research or what you should be looking for so a really number one thing with TikTok ads specifically is finding a product that solves a problem for a broad audience now it's common knowledge that you want your products to solve a problem um, or you know create some sort of desire but what most people People don't talk about is the broad audience aspect so essentially what I mean by this is instead of looking for uh, products that solve problems for a very specific kind of person which is what we did with Facebook with TikTok we're looking for products that solve a problem for pretty much everybody uh, best example I can think of is you know you have the dog water bottle that solves the problem of having poop bags for the dog poop and then having the water um, at the end of it so you can basically take your dogs on walks and you also have you know the bags and the way to uh, give them water that's a great product however I wouldn't prefer to do it with TikTok because not everybody owns a dog a good example of a good product would be something like the sh you know something that somebody can use in the shower like the phone shower thing that held your phone up in the shower or a kitchen product and even though kitchen and shower niche they are niches technically it's a specific niche it's a specific category and there's many products inside of those categories um, most people we can say safely like 90% of the people in the United States and Canada at least have access to a shower and usually shower um, and most people also have access to a kitchen so that's what I mean when I say that we want a product that solves a problem for a broad audience we're not looking for something that has a limited audience we want something that everybody can use the next thing is the cost of 10 to 40 dollars and margins of at least 50 percent uh, read that again if you don't understand it essentially if you buy a product for 15 dollars you have to sell it for at least 30 um, and try not to do products that cost less than 10 or more than 40 because it's simply either going to be too cheap like too low ticket it's gonna be hard to get a margin or it's gonna to be too expensive for the platform of TikTok. not that you can't do too cheap products or too expensive products of course you can there's gonna be exceptions um, I make exceptions all the time to this rule but if you want to be safe it's good to just stick to the rule um, another thing that I put on this list is products that can easily be sold in a TikTok format 
What do I mean when I say this? Essentially, if you're a user of TikTok, if you're not, then maybe you should hop on and, and get a feel for the platform, see what it's all about. But if you can picture yourself making 20 plus good TikToks for that specific product, then there's a good chance that it could perform well on TikTok. This is definitely not a final deciding factor, but it's more something to keep in mind when you're looking at products. For example, uh, a pair of shoes. Like I'm not a big fan of testing shoes on TikTok. I've already tried it. I haven't been able to make it work. And the reason is because how do you market a pair of shoes in a TikTok? There's not many ways that you can show it off be cool, be entertaining um, enough for the platform um, because you want your ads to be good and this is one way that you can you know, make sure that you have a decent product for the platform. Another thing that you can look out for when you're doing your product research is a unique or new variations of previous winning products or well-known products. So the best example I can think about for this is Blendjet, right? Like they basically took a blender and they found a very unique version of it which was this very small cylindrical thing um, and it's portable and it's basically a portable blender. So they took something that already existed, found a very unique version of it um, and saw a lot of success that way and honestly to go even deeper on that thought I've seen different variations of Blendjet perform very very well as well so you have Blendjet which is the cylindrical one I've seen dome shaped ones uh, the protein shaker ones so people have saw what Blendjet did and then found different variations of a uh, you know a portable mini blender and tested it and saw success with those so that's the best example that I can think of for that all right so let's talk about product research uh, the copycat method so this method is really really simple and I'm actually gonna bust out my phone for this one um, I'll just do a quick screen recording and throw it up on the screen here all right so I'm recording my screen and this is obviously one way that you can follow the copycat method to find good products and I'm sorry my for you page is not that good it's basically all gonna be memes and dirty jokes sorry about that this strategy is basically just scrolling through the for you page and looking for different advertisements or looking for different products that you can potentially sell now like I said I'm not sure we're gonna find one here because oh, what's up Ari What's good? Shout out Ari Shearson. Uh, great guy. You should follow his TikTok, by the way. He's posting some fire shit on there. Um, but scrolling through TikTok, um, looking at advertisements, looking at feed posts, looking for products that could perform good here is a great way to do it. And the best thing about this method, as opposed to the next method I'm about to show you, is that you're on the front lines and you're seeing things that are popping right now. Um, the other method that we have is scrolling through hashtags which is one of the problems with that method is it's gonna show you a lot of older products, you know, from six months ago, even years ago, that performed really, really well. Um, with this method, you're seeing things that are popping now. So I don't wanna dismiss this, and if you can come on here and start finding some ads and videos of products that you wanna start selling, this is a great way to find products. Now, the next way we find products is scrolling through TikTok hashtags on your computer. Now, the reason I say on your computer is because this is very tedious on your phone. So what you're gonna wanna do is search up something super general, such as products, um, and then we're gonna click videos on the top, and this is gonna show you a lot of videos that have you know hashtag products. So when you come to this page, you're gonna see a bunch of products, but honestly, this is like the biggest product hashtag that there is. So products is gonna have a fuck ton of videos in it. Like if I go hashtag product, you can see 1.2 billion views. So these are all gonna be your, your top of the line, you know, dummy saturated products and not that these are bad and you can definitely still make these work or find unique variations the reason we're on this page is not to find products to sell it's to find hashtags to, to scroll through further so you can see what we have on our screen now and what you can do is search through these hashtags and basically look for things that uh, could be good so you know hashtag viral TikTok that could be something hashtag birthday gifts could definitely be something um, let's see if we can find some more. TikTok made me buy it is another one that's a little bit too big and I probably wouldn't recommend uh, searching through products on there unless you can sort by new. Um, so just kind of scrolling through the big hashtags and searching for smaller hashtags. And then essentially what I would do is find like five or six smaller hashtags, Jesus, 140 billion. I probably wouldn't search through that either. Um, not that it's not good, it's also not very product related. Um, birthday gifts, 500 million views is cool. Um, it's still pretty damn big, like ideally we want somewhere between like 30 and 100 million, but um, so this is on the bigger side for sure, but you could dig deep in here and probably find some pretty good products. Um, so once you have like four or five hashtags to scroll through, this is where you actually click into the videos and you scroll through, you can just click this little button here. Super easy to do, and if you see something that you think is cool, go and search it up on AliExpress and pop it into your product list. Um, this is this is honestly how I found a majority of my winners over the last year, um, just doing TikTok ads, is just by scrolling through hashtags um, and finding smaller hashtags and then scrolling through TikToks under the smaller hashtags 
um, and then correlating it to an AliExpress product and then testing it out. All right, so now you fully understand the copycat method and how to find products that are basically already proven on the platform that you can go and sell on your store. Now, let's talk about the Pioneer method because this is where things get really exciting and I honestly haven't talked that much about the Pioneer method on my YouTube channel um, other than for Facebook. Um, I have talked about it for Facebook, of course, from years, years ago, um, but now I'm bringing it back for TikTok and I don't have that many videos about it. So this is actually going to be probably my first time talking about Pioneer method for TikTok and you guessed it, we're gonna be scrolling through AliExpress, baby. Just like the good old days, um, literally just hop on AliExpress, go into a fun category. There's a really basic way that I like to set it up, which by the way, this pisses me off so much. AliExpress got rid of the newest button right here, um, which makes Pioneer Method a little bit more annoying, but it's most definitely not impossible. Um, but what we can do is we can set the parameters for our criteria. So we'll say minimum price 10, maximum price 40. And then you can mess with all of these other settings, you know, ratings, um, you can filter by orders, um, price, but honestly, just leave it on best match and just scroll and see what you can find. And um, the only downside to this strategy is obviously you're gonna want a little bit more experience if you're gonna be the one deciding if the product is good or not, um, because we have no track record here. We can't see if it's blown up on the platform before, and we can't see you know how it's doing on TikTok already. But I know most of you are pretty experienced. I'm definitely experienced enough to see a product and know if it's a winner or potentially a winner. Um, just on AliExpress. Another really big downside of this Pioneer method, which we will talk about in this video, is how you actually get content for it. Obviously, we'll get into it, but one of the downsides is if the product is not already popping on TikTok, you're not gonna be able to repurpose content and you're not gonna be able to borrow ads. So uh, one of the ways that you're gonna have to do it is either buying the product yourself, um, takes a little bit more time, costs a little bit more money, whatever. Um, but like I said, um, if, you're one, if you're somebody who kind of wants to find their own products and make your own successes, and if you're honestly tired of the two ROAS copycat method products like I kind of am, and that's one of the reasons I started doing Pioneer Method in the first place, um, and you want to get some big, big, big winners, uh, this is 100% the way to go. Um, use your previous experience, use the criteria that I gave you to scroll through AliExpress, find products that you think would work well on the platform, and uh, have fun, and this is honestly one of my favorite methods, so uh, we're gonna get into the next section of this course, which is going to be talking about store creation. What's going on, guys? Sorry to interrupt, but before we continue on into this training where I'm gonna be showing you a live store, I'm gonna be creating a campaign with you and showing you all of my scaling strategies up front, I wanted to take a second and tell you that I do have a couple spots opening in my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one and have me help you find a winner, I literally just had a student pop a winner yesterday. He's doing about two, $300 a day right now with like 80 to 100 in spend. Uh, and we're about to scale that shit up to the moon. If you want me to work with you to help you find a winner and scale it, there will be a link in the description where you can apply to work with me. And if I feel like you're a good fit based on the application, I will personally reach out to you, do a call, make sure that it's a good fit, make sure that it's something that's gonna be valuable for you, of course, before you join. And if it is, then we can go ahead and work directly one-on-one -on -one, um, and I'll help you find a winning product and scale your store. All right, so let's talk about store creation and how you should go about building your store. So first question on the agenda, branded versus non-branded store. I'll tell you from personal experience, when I first started on TikTok ads, I instantly started doing one product stores or one product page stores where it's just the product page. And the reason I started doing this is because I split tested general store versus one product store and and in my experience, right, I know a lot of you have had different experiences and a lot of you have had success with general stores, which I really love. However, I'm gonna talk about my own experience and what I personally see. One product stores performed much better in terms of success rate with finding winning products, meaning it was a little bit easier to pop a winning product if you were putting in that little bit of extra work with a store. So this is how I started out on TikTok ads is actually doing not so good one product stores. Now I fully transitioned that into doing really good one product stores with custom images, custom videos, custom graphics, icons, you name it, um, you know, homepage, product page, basically the whole shebang. And I'll actually show you an example of what a finished one looks like. Um, that way you can see for yourself. Now, this goes back to what we talked about in the beginning of the video, which was me repositioning my strategy and everything that I'm doing to actually be able to build long-term and sustainable e-commerce businesses, as opposed to just build and kill dropshipping sites. Now, this is a personal decision of mine. And by any means, if your goal is just to make 20, 30K, you can 100% do it just with a build and kill dropshipping store for sure. But I'm talking about the new strategy that I've been working on and what I would probably recommend that you follow as well. It takes a little bit more time, 
cry about it, cost a little bit more money, work harder. And by the way, with a fully branded store like the one I'm about to show you in this video, um, I've seen at least 20 to 30% increase in the amount of sales that we make during testing and at least a 20 to 30% increase in the amount of winners that we actually find by doing a branded store as opposed to either general, niche, or you know one product. We actually take the extra step to you know make it look branded and whatnot. So now that we got that out of the way, you can make your decision. I don't care what you do. I would recommend go fully branded from the beginning so that when you do find a winning product, you don't have to transition shit. It's already branded. All you have to do is you know pretty much talk to the manufacturer, get your logo on the product. Super easy to do. Uh, maybe I'll make a video about that sometime in the future. But in terms of like building your branded store, you know how do you get the images? How do you get the gifts? How do you get the icons? Whatever. I'll run it through you very very quickly. But before I do that, let me show you this finished store because I know that that's what you guys really want to see. Um, so this is loompaths.com. This is not an actual store that um, I tested or uh, ran. I basically just said like let's build an example store so I can show people and show clients what we do um, and this is what it is so you can see that it has like the dark theme looks very nice logo uh, custom domain so what it is, is it's a glowstone so it basically you can put it in your gardens and stuff like that and basically makes it glow in the dark um, whatever it's not the greatest product in the world um, but you can see we have a custom logo custom name um, the whole store is basically branded we have these custom icons which I'm going to show you how to get in a minute um, you know we even went as far as like talking about um, you know the technology that goes into the product that actually makes it glow and this is the home page we have a little FAQ here um, with some really good sales copy in there so if anybody comes on here to read it um, it looks legit now would I grow a million dollar brand with this home page probably not but for one we're not going to be sending traffic to the home page and for two if this product ends up being a winner the home page is the one thing that I don't hundred percent mind going in and editing and making it look a little bit better so let me show you the product page real quick. Um, you can see that we put the uh, we put the logo on most of the product images here. Um, and we also searched Google, AliExpress, all the different places to try to find the best uh, product images. Putting your logo on the product images, great thing to do. Um, this particular product doesn't really have a place where you can put the logo on the product, so um, made it super duper easy. Um, we even have the logo like right here. Um, it kind of puts it all together. Um, and obviously with the reviews, we are using PageFly or GemPage. I think it was PageFly for this one. Um, and we have the reviews in this style rather than the uh, generic Luke style. So even though Luke's and A reviews and those apps are really, really good, I think this looks a little bit better um, and we can add images and put a little bit more effort into the way that it you know, appears on the page. So how do you get the images, the logo, all that? Well, logo you can make on Canva or you can do what I do, which is using paint.net. Um, squaring off the images, so this is really important. A lot of people, um, when they get these pictures from AliExpress, they'll just screenshot it and it won't be a perfect square. Um, so going into a software like paint.net and basically um, making sure that it's a perfect square for every single picture on your site, um, unless it should be horizontal, um, and obviously editing images, um, like these images right here, this little box right here was white with green text. So it looked really, really shitty. Um, so I went into my image editor, I made a black box and I put uh, white text there. So it doesn't make a huge difference, but if there was a green, uh, a white background with green text right there, it just looks horrible and it didn't fit the branding of the website. So doing little things like that goes a long way, um, especially when it comes to building customer trust and it actually looks like you put a little bit of effort on your site instead of just throwing something together really quickly. So let's talk about GIFs. Um, so basically, you're gonna wanna get your advertisements uh, before you start to create your GIFs, or if you're repurposing, just use those. But there is a GIF creator, it's called Giphy.com. You basically just click create and uh, you upload your video and then you can create a GIF out of it very, very easily. And then you can download it, put it on your website. Um, obviously, if you're using TikToks, they're gonna be vertical. So what you can do from that point is go into a GIF editor, change the sizing of it. You can even put your logo in the, in the corner of it, just like we did with the images, um, which makes it look really, really cool as well. So it's just a few things that you can do. So in terms of icons, the website that I use to get them is called uh, thenounproject.com. Um, this is not sponsored, I just found them through Google. And you literally just search up a keyword um, and it shows you a bunch of different icons on here. Now they are not free, so if you wanna use them, you actually have to pay um, I believe it's like $3 per icon, um, and obviously you can reuse them as many times as you want, or you can pay like 40 bucks a year to get unlimited access to it. Um, but in my experience, I really, really love icons, and I love the way that they you know, bring the website together, um, you know, especially on the homepage, and you can also implement them in the product page as well. 
Uh, but yeah, just something I wanted to throw in this training just so that you know how you can make a branded website, make it feel branded, make it look branded. That way, when you find a winning product, you don't have to scramble, change shit on your website, risk ruining your winning product by affecting the conversion rate, and you can just create it good from the beginning. And you may think that putting this much effort into a store actually takes a lot of time, and it actually doesn't. This one was built in maybe like three, four, maybe five hours in total, um, which is not that bad for a store of this scale. Um, and like I said, the homepage doesn't matter that much. You don't have to have this section. You don't have to have the FAQ. Um, if you're gonna put extra effort into anything, do it on the product page because that's where we're gonna be sending traffic. All right, let's touch briefly on ad creation and how you can actually go about getting your advertisements. So there's two different ways, obviously depending on which strategy you're doing. If you're doing the copycat method, then the way to go is most likely going to be repurposed content. So there's many ways to get repurposed content, but the main way is finding a TikTok, using an app like snaptick.app to uh, download it, and then editing it in whatever way you wanna edit it. You can take multiple TikToks, combine them into one, uh, do some sort of social proof thing. Um, this is one very, very easy way for you to get creatives quickly that will allow you to basically just shotgun test a product and see if it makes any sales. And obviously if it does, eventually you're going to wanna to get custom content anyways, but for those of you guys who are following the pioneer method and there's no TikToks out there for you to repurpose and obviously you don't wanna use like a YouTube video or something like that because it's not native to the TikTok platform, then the way that you're gonna to wanna to go is custom content. Now you can order the product and make it yourself and I would 100% recommend doing this. It's a great way to to get good ads but for those of you who are on the road a lot or if you work or if you just have a lot of money and you don't want to do shit um, then you can use uh, my company Viral Ecom Ads. We built an amazing custom content UGC team over there um, and the way that you get to it is you go to the page, you go to the packages, um, you can get a one pack which is basically just one TikTok if you just want to do a, a quick test for cheap um, or you can do a three pack. So um, obviously the three pack has the best value and this will give you three different variations of custom content. So you basically go in here, purchase this and then you fill out the submission form, send the product out to the uh, creator, you know, somebody on our team that's gonna actually make the videos. And then literally within seven to 10 days of them receiving the product, they will send you their finished ads, um, filmed fully custom for any product essentially. And I would highly recommend if you go this route, do not ship them a product from AliExpress um, because they're gonna be waiting like a month to get their product. It's just really annoying and it's gonna take forever to get your content. Only do this, at least for now, with products that you can either expedite from China with a private agent or products that you can find on Amazon with Amazon Prime. And of course, if you're in Europe or another country that doesn't have access to the United States, Amazon Prime, maybe you can make a friend or, or have you know somebody that you know in the United States prime the product uh, to the TikToker. That way it doesn't take forever to get the product. So those are the two very quick ways that you can get ads. One of them is repurposing, and the other one is for the Pioneer Method. If you don't have content to repurpose, um, you can get custom content uh, via Viral Ecom Ads, or you can order it and make it yourself. All right, let's create a campaign together. I actually wanna go into a test ad account that I have in front of me now and actually create a campaign with you so that you can see all the details and all the nuances in the way that I create campaigns. So instead of me just telling you what we do, let's just go ahead and create it from scratch. So, so go ahead and click create a new campaign, click conversions, name the campaign the name of your product. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, I'll just put product name because I'm not actually gonna be doing anything here. Um, and once you get to the ad group page, uh, we're basically gonna just name it open one. And if you're gonna do ACO, then do ACO. If you're gonna do a single ad, then just leave it as open one. Now, what you're gonna wanna do here is click on website, select your pixel, and then optimize for complete payment. So just like that, you can see that we have our test pixel in there and we also have our complete payment um, optimization event selected. Now for placements, you can either do auto or you can just select on TikTok. I've done auto before and it doesn't really spend on these other platforms either way. Um, in terms of user comments and video downloads, downloads doesn't matter. Um, comments, I would probably recommend to just leave them on. Um, after all, if you turn them off, TikTok basically tells you um, that it'll increase engagement, yada, yada. So I started leaving them on and the ads perform fine with them on. So obviously if you're doing uh, ACO, go ahead and turn this on. We're not gonna do it for the sake of this. Um, and if you have this option, if you have the option to do custom targeting or auto targeting, what we're gonna do is automatic targeting. Um, and if you don't have this option, then all you're gonna do is basically just scroll down here, 
um, add Canada to the locations, leave the ages broad, gender broad, um, language, I usually just click English, um, doesn't really matter that much though. Um, but yeah, age, you can do 18 plus, um, you can also do 25 plus, I'd say it depends on the product, um, you can feel it out and see what is worth it for you. Gender, no matter what the product is, I wouldn't recommend narrowing down by gender, um, but age, you can definitely do 18 plus, uh, because 13 to 17, honestly, is just a little bit young and that traffic is really cheap and just really not very high quality. Um, obviously, depending on the product, but most of the time it's not. Um, and now, if you can do automatic targeting, just click automatic targeting and it'll just do all that for you. So don't worry about it um, unless you wanna uh, customize your age groups or anything like that. Um, in terms of budgets, there are a few different budgets that I recommend um, and I can tell you from my experience, recently the budget that's been working the best is just straight up $40 a day. For those of you who have a smaller budget, maybe you don't have you know $1,000 laying around to just um, you know test products with, I understand that you wanna do as little budget as possible. So you can do $20 daily budgets and if you wanna be a little bit different, I have also seen success with $25 day daily budgets. Um, however, if you want the best possible results and if you want to be set up in the best way to be able to scale start with forty dollars a day and we don't actually spend more money when it comes to uh, testing the product we just make a decision a lot quicker um, and the following day you just have to be on top of it so we're not going to let it run for the full day at forty dollars unless it makes sales of course um, we're just going to keep an eye on it closer and we'll talk about that in the next section um, right after we create this campaign we're going to talk about what to do the day after and how you can actually analyze your ads and decide if it's a winner or not. So we're just gonna do the $40 a day option. Like I said, that's what's bringing me the best results recently. Um, we're not gonna do day parting, we're not gonna do any of this stuff, and that's basically it. So just auto-targeting, you know, throw your pixel in there. Honestly, not much to do on the ad group level. So on the ad level, you can see that I have just like some bullshit, um, you know, test e-com, whatever, on here. So obviously upload your ad. The ad copy structure that I usually use, you know, in the actual ad text itself is I'll say something along the lines of, Product name is out now. So you can do something like that. Um, or you can say just straight up available now. This is something that I use a lot when I'm product testing. Um, or if you're doing ACO, it'll give you the option to do five different ad copies. My best advice for ad copy here, just keep it simple, like keep it as simple as you can because you don't have that much space, right? Like you have like a line or two, maybe a very short sentence. Um, and honestly, most people aren't even really reading captions. Um, so you can split test them, but honestly, they don't matter that much, especially when you're just testing a product and seeing what happens. Um, you don't really need to worry about it that much. So go ahead, upload your video ad, and then we're gonna click submit. And uh, I'll see you on the other side. There's one more step that we have to do to finish this test campaign. And then we'll talk about what to do after. All right, so you can see we have our campaign here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that campaign name and it's gonna bring us to the ad group. So um, we have one ad group and we want five in total. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, duplicate this four times. Go ahead and click duplicate. Um, and you also notice that I scheduled it for midnight. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last clip, um, but we're gonna go ahead and schedule these new ones for midnight as well because TikTok does not carry that over into the duplicates, unfortunately. It's very annoying, uh, but we're literally not gonna change anything else. We're just gonna duplicate this four times, so go ahead and click next and submit. Um, and I guess that will pretty much wrap up everything that we need to do to launch the test campaign. It's really, really simple. Um, obviously, put your product page link in there. Um, click publish. Make sure that everything runs smoothly and uh, make sure that everything publishes good and uh, you will be good to go. So now let's get into what you need to do the day after to actually decide, is this a winning product? Is it not a winning product? You know, Should you move on? Should you spend more money? Should you test new creatives? Lots of really intricate questions, and I'm gonna be giving you some very intricate answers to all of the different scenarios that can happen during a product test, at least the top like four or five scenarios that I run into most. I'm gonna be giving you exactly what to do in those scenarios, so stick around and we'll get right to it. All right, let's talk about what happens after you launch your initial test campaigns because there are a few things that happen. Obviously, either you're going to make sales or you're not gonna make sales and it's gonna be losing money, profitable, breaking even, um, but we're gonna take it even more in depth and I'm gonna be talking about what to do if you get one sale, two sales, three sales, um, down to the specific numbers. So. I'm gonna run through these scenarios. I'm also gonna show them on my screen so that you can have them there and you can revisit them next time you launch your next product test. 
And if you do, leave a like, bro. Leave a comment too when you come back and use this to actually uh, analyze your ads. I would love to know that you guys are actually using this content and showing that you appreciate it and stuff like that. Um, but let's get right into it. So if you spend 60 to $80 with zero sales, turn it off and move on right super simple this is probably the easiest one to decide and if you want to be a little bit ballsy spend 80 right if you want to be tight on your budget spend 60 90 percent of the time i land a winning product it always 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 makes sales within 60 dollars spent so take that as you wish i personally take it as if i spend 60 to 80 dollars with no sale I'm gone, I'm out, I'm moving on to the next product because I know that there are plenty of products out there that will actually either make a sale, make two sales, be profitable within the first 60 to $80 spent. And these same rules apply whether you're doing $20 budgets, 25, 40, 100, 300, doesn't matter, I would still follow all of these same exact rules. Like I said, if you're doing $40 budgets, you're just gonna have to act a little bit quicker than if you're doing $20 budgets. Now, if you get one sale, so let's say you spent 60 to $80 and you get a single sale, then what I would do is let it spend to a total of $100 approximately, and if it still only has one sale, I would probably turn it off and move on. Um, so obviously getting down to the nitty gritty, if you have one sale at $60 spent, let it run the full $100 budget, and if it doesn't make another sale, then uh, you know just turn it off and move on. I mean, almost every single product that I've found that does well makes two sales with it. I mean, that's a $50 cost per purchase. If it can't even hit that on day one, I don't even wanna mess with it. However, if you check it again at $100 and it does make another sale, um, I would let it spend around 130 to 150. I know on this list I said 150, but obviously feel it out. Clearly, if it's a lower ticket product that you're selling for like 20 bucks and you spent $100 and you only made two sales, that could very well be the point where you just move on. Um, however, this is gonna be kind of like a blanket statement and for most scenarios, these are the rules that you should follow. So if it still only has two sales at $150 in spend, um, I would probably turn it off, right? Like $70 cost per purchase is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and yes, it could get better, right? Like maybe if you let it spend another hundred bucks, it'll pop five sales and it'll balance out. Um, but the chances of that happening are so minute, I'd say 99% of the time, you're better off just moving on. From this point, so essentially from the point that you spend $150 on you should either be profitable breaking even or not at a net loss of 150 dollars so i hope this makes sense to you um, because it is a little bit confusing to understand but obviously if you're profitable let that bitch run and move into scaling if it's breaking even you can do a couple things uh, as a part of the scaling but you're mostly just going to be wanting to test new creatives campaigns budgets strategies whatever for a week or so um, and obviously if it's losing money, even if it's a little bit of money, let it hit the net loss of $150 before you move on or let it run for seven days. Now, what I mean for this is, um, for example, if you spend uh, $500 on ads and you're only at a loss of $60, you're basically breaking even. And I probably would launch new creatives at that point. You know, find new creatives that you can run or make custom content. You know, give yourself that $150 worth of wiggle room to, you know, test around with different budgets, different strategies. Um, maybe you wanna switch up your website, maybe you wanna switch up your offer, uh, test new creatives, many different things. But if you're in a negative, try not to spend more than seven days on this particular product. So if you're not profitable within seven days, even if you're breaking even, right? Like even if you're just breaking even, you're not really losing any money. If you're not profitable, move on after the seven days. There's no real point in sticking around with a product, especially if you've tested like, you know, two or three new creatives, you've done a couple of changes to your website. If you did all those things, gave it seven days and you're still negative, you know, 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever, just move on and just give up on the product. Just trust me, you're gonna spend a lot of time and a lot of money and honestly, a lot of mental awareness, you know, basically marrying this product, spending a lot of time and money. Just trust me on this. If you're not breaking even or profitable within seven days, just move on and do not exceed the loss of $150 because there's no reason, like there's not many winning products out there um, that will lose more than $150 before coming profitable. Now, let's talk about scaling strategies. So let's say you reach the point where you're profitable. Congratulations, super excited for you. Make sure that you follow one of these scaling strategies that I'm gonna be talking about right now because these are the core foundations of what will allow you to get to that $3,000 per day point um, without losing a bunch of money and without losing your winning product um, because that's what a lot of people do. They'll just do a bunch of random shit that doesn't work um, and you know basically cross their fingers and pray. So there's a few different things that you can do. 
horizontal scaling and vertical scaling are two basic foundational uh, scaling tactics that you need to understand. Horizontal is basically making more campaigns, you know, adding more uh, volume of ad groups and campaigns and ads as opposed to increasing budgets. And then vertical is basically increasing budgets. Now, underneath both of those, there's a couple different ways that you can horizontally scale. And there's a couple different ways that you can scale vertically as well. One of the best ways to scale horizontally in the beginning stages is simply creating new campaigns and testing new creatives inside of those new campaigns. So doing everything exactly the same way that we just talked about and we just did together, except using different creatives. This way you can build up, you know, two, three different campaigns using different creatives and that'll set you up really good for the future to be able to pull the top creatives out of your top three campaigns and do you know ACOs, isolations, which is what we'll talk about right now. So isolations and ACOs. Isolation is basically a campaign with a single ad in it and the reason it's called an isolation is because you're forcing TikTok to spend on that single ad. If you do an ACO with five different ads, TikTok's gonna spend on whichever ad it so pleases to spend on. Now, this is both a great thing and a bad thing because one of the ads that TikTok chooses not to spend on could be the best performing ad. So this is why testing isolated ads is really the best way to split test an actual ad's performance but ACOs are great because they optimize really, really good and they're really, really consistent. So what you can do is if you're starting with an isolation, uh, then you can make an ACO based on that creative that is working in the isolation. If you're starting with an ACO, you can make an isolation based on the top performing ad creative in the ACO. Listen to that again if you didn't understand, but you're basically teeter-tottering between an ACO campaign and an isolation campaign. And in my personal experience, this is one of the best ways to scale horizontally before you start going vertical um, because you can decide whether or not ACO or isolation works best for you. Now, in terms of vertical scaling, there's mainly two ways that I would do this. So one of them is testing higher budgets in new campaigns. Which budgets should you test? Well, it basically depends on where you start. If you start at $20, I would probably bump up to 40. So essentially taking your best ad, ad group, duplicating it into a new campaign at $40 a day. And yes, I would do five versions of that. So basically do it the same way we talked about in this video. Um, but if you start at 40 and you wanna scale vertically from the $40 point, um, then you can jump up to $100 daily budgets. Now, I would honestly probably scale horizontally a little bit before I started going to $100 budgets because I've scaled pretty damn high with just $40 budgets. You know, I'm talking three, four, five K a day. Um, and you don't really need these $100 budgets. I mean, they could perform very well, but take advantage of what's working for you right now. $40 a day budgets are working great. Stick to $40 a day budgets and scale horizontally quite a bit before moving into a different budget group. But I will say, if you're doing $20 budgets, try $40 budgets, because in my experience, almost 60% of the time, at least, uh, $40 budgets will outperform $20 budgets. I can't say the same about $100 as compared to 40, but at least with 40 compared to 20, 40 performs better 100% of the time. Now, the last thing which I haven't experienced all that much is surf scaling. Now, this is one thing that works very, very well on TikTok. I've seen a lot of people make a lot of money with this. Um, and it's basically, you choose your favorite ad group, and of course you can do this with multiple ad groups, but I'll just start with one. Um, and whatever budget it's at right now, it can be, you know, let's say 11 a.m. and it's at a $40 daily budget. Let's say it spends $10 and you get two sales. That's gonna be a nice juicy ROAS on that ad group, and you're gonna want it to spend more money throughout that day. So at 11 a.m., like literally midday, you're gonna edit the budget and change it to $100. Um, and then check it again in a few hours. Now it might have 30 or $40 spent um, because you increase the daily budget. It's not gonna spend the full 100 in a couple hours. Um, if it's still performing good, bump that bitch up to 200. Check it again in a couple hours. If you check it again in a couple hours, it's still working. Go up to 400, go up to 1,000, you know, basically continue increasing it. And then once midnight comes around, reset it back to what it was originally at and get ready for day two. Um, and obviously if you started at 40, reset it back to 40 um, and so on and so forth. I have seen success with this strategy and it does definitely work. It makes the spending a little bit weird and it's not always gonna spend whatever budget you put in there. Like if you work your way up to a thousand dollar a day daily budget, your total ad spend for that ad group for the day might only be $400 or $300. It honestly just depends on how it spends. 
Um, but obviously, surf scaling can work really, really great. Do it at your own risk, of course, and make sure that you stay by your computer so you can keep on checking it every hour or every two hours. All right, that was the training. I hope it was super valuable for you, and I hope that seeing me do all these new things is inspiring you to take your dropshipping career to the next level and maybe start thinking about building a brand. Maybe start thinking about doing custom content more often. Doing these things have honestly accelerated my growth so much over the last few months. Um, just you know, doing the custom content, doing the branded stores. You know, the Pioneer method is huge, and it made a huge impact back when I did Facebook. And I'm super excited to find some new winners on TikTok. And honestly, a lot of the winners I've been popping lately, um, actually nobody's even doing them on TikTok right now. So super excited that I'm finally finding my own winning products, and I hope that you guys can start doing that as well. And I'm super excited to see where these new strategies and these new methods take us. So. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment with some feedback or feel free to ask any questions or answer any questions because I know a lot of you read the comments. Of course, I read the comments. So happy to see you guys down there. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. Like I said earlier, if you want to get into my coaching, I do have a couple spots open. So send me a message on Instagram or click the application in the description. That's pretty much it for this video. This is Noah Brewer and I'm out. Peace.